This is the 28th annual Insectival, a festival celebrating insects and their role in nature and our lives. You kind of look like a scorpion almost. A popular part of the festival is the Insect Cafe, where you can try salsa made with black ants, chocolate cookies made with crickets, and Chelsea Thomas even brought one of her favorites. I made some snickerdoodle bars and they have mealworm powder and buffalo beetle larva over top of them um, as a topping. I really love those little buffalo beetles. They're a great flavor. Both of those things add a nuttiness to that dish. Entomophagy is defined as the practice of eating insects, according to Merriam-Webster. I reached out to several leading experts in the field of entomophagy to discuss the dietary benefits of eating insects, as well as the future of feeding a growing human population. So you're getting protein on an equable amount, you're getting um, a lot of B12, which is in the exoskeleton, more so than steak by a big amount, you're getting iron, fiber, probiotics, um, you're getting the magnesium, calcium, uh, phosphorus, and uh, you're also getting a couple other nutrients that I'm leaving out, but they are chock full. So when we're dietarily taking in protein, what we really need are the essential amino acids that we cannot make ourselves. And so the beauty of consuming animal protein is that it's a one-stop shop. It has all of those essential amino acids. Insects are animals, so they provide similar uh, nutrients as other animals. So that's primarily protein and fat. In the Eastern world, entomophagy is highly popular, and in places like Thailand and Cambodia, crickets, ants, and even tarantulas could be served for dinner. I just ask that if you don't want to eat it, just don't eat it, but don't make a really big deal about how disgusting it is because that's really putting down something that over half of the world does. I asked the experts about how people in the West are warming up to the idea of eating insects kids and their relationship to this space, they'll probably be some of the bigger as uh, advocates of it, whether it's from genuinely caring about the environment from a young age or, you know, just caring to eat something that freaks their parents out because they don't care. And every event I host, there is a couple more people who are already familiar with the concept, willing to try insects. So what went from nobody having any notion of this and being completely repulsed by the idea. Now like 10, 15% of the group have either already tried insects, have already heard about it, or came there like really excited to try them. They don't taste well. Uh, it's, it's a term that sounds different in, uh, in Dutch. Um, it's something that people say, but they never tasted it. So I would in, indeed invite people that uh, uh, beforehand know it doesn't taste well, to actually taste it and then see if they are right or not. But maybe that's the, the researcher in me as well. It's, uh, uh, for me, it's strange to have an opinion about something if you don't know it. And really when it comes to sort of the environmental crisis, it's the next generation who's gonna be needing to solve that more. Like we're laying the groundwork so that the next generation has food to eat. Uh, there are a million insect species, 2000 of which are being consumed by people. So it makes a, a large difference. Uh, uh, which species you're eating. There are reasons to think that there are certain health benefits associated with certain insect species. But what you see now is that uh, uh, these are sometimes being extrapolated. World population has been rising exponentially. For the past 100 years, the population has risen from 2 billion to nearly 8 billion people. I asked Ali if she sees insect agriculture as a possible answer to this continual growth. Insects definitely aren't the only solution to a, a big web of things that we need to make our food system sustainable, nutritious, and, and work in the future. But they're, insects are not the only solution, but they're the most provocative. And that's a line that I love to use frequently because uh, I don't want people to think that, strange as we are, you know, we haven't all drank all the Kool-Aid and there's uh, no pressure for everyone to eat bugs with every meal or just stop eating meat. But Insects do a phenomenal job at bringing the conversation back to something we've somehow gotten really far away from, which is, hey, what you eat impacts your body and the world, and you should know that and pay attention to it. One of the largest proponents of entomophagy in the world was on our own doorstep. Marianne Shockley was a researcher and entomologist at the University of Georgia until her unfortunate passing this past summer. Julie had a personal connection to her and keeps Marianne's spirit alive with her work. 
So I met Marianne in 2014 at a conference in Montreal um, because we just immediately like bonded. Like she was the, you know, as, as enthusiastic and excited as I am about everything she was too. And so it was just so cool to find somebody like me. She is a beacon of light. And so that was a uh, hard loss for the community. Um, she's also on our trade organization too, NASIA, um, and uh, hosted our last big conference. So definitely knew her quite well. A lot of what I'm, I'm trying really hard to kind of step up and fill in, you know, where she's some of that void. So I try to help mentor her students where I can and do things like this because clearly she would have been who you would have talked to. Just trying to be bolder and more out there in her honor. I, I want to continue this in Atlanta with there ought to be more entomophagy in Atlanta. All the cities of comparable size have more, and I just hope we can keep growing in this area the way that she got us started. Events like Insectival and the Insect Cafe open dialogue to talk about these issues. Although adding insects to your diet might not save the world, it's certainly an interesting way to start. Tristan Webb reporting for Grady News Source.